Welcome to another Warmasters Workshop short. <clears throat> in this tutorial, we're going to be uh, learning how to saltwater etch, um, just like how I do the engravings on the, um, the forged steel pendants that I make. I use this method to engrave metal. You can engrave uh, pretty much any kind of metal that will, um, that will carry a charge. So pretty much every metal <laughs> that, that is, you know, that's a uh, regular metal. <clears throat> Um, but it's, it's super simple to do. Um, it is a little bit messy and it does require electricity. So it's not something that I would recommend for kids to do, but, um, definitely for those of you that are, that are uh, 18 and older, I would say, um, this is something that, that you could do pretty much on your own. So I uh, just want to give you a quick look. So this is what I use to power or to uh, give me the electricity. This is just an old AC adapter. As you can see, the output voltage is 12 volts at 2.5 amps. So there's a lot of amps on this thing. Um, the more amps you have, the faster it works. Now, <clears throat> I probably wouldn't go above 2.5 or 3 amps maximum. There's just no, no real need to go that any higher than that. Um, but what you do is you cut the bottom or the, the cable of the AC adapter and you separate the positive out and the negative and you attach those to alligator clips like this so that you can um, you can attach it to um, the pendant. You put the red positive on the pendant and then you put the black on your uh, cotton bud that will hold the salt water that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to stick these on the plate for now, hold them in place and I'm going to go ahead and plug up my AC adapter here. So it is now, uh, it is now live or hot. So the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, prepare our salt water solution. So I'm just going to use some regular table salt and I've just got that in a little uh, graduated cup here. Um, as far as how much table salt, you want to have enough in there so that um, you can fill this cup all the, almost all the way up and the salt is, uh, there's more salt than what the water will hold. So the water becomes what's, what's called insoluble. So we've got our salt and our water together there. And I'm just going to take this cotton bud and we're going to stir it up without getting my hand in the way. I'm just going to give this a good stir. As you can see, I've used this, um, I've used this cup several times for this purpose. It doesn't have to be... Um, a fresh cup every time. You can use the same old cup because it's basically just some salt, uh, salt water that, that's in here. And then when it, the salt water, when the water starts to evaporate, the salt will condense at the bottom back into crystallized form. And then you'll get some of the oxidation, which is what these, what this is here. This is just rust, basically. All right, so we've got our salt water mixed up. And I don't know if you can see, but you can, you might be able to see the salt sort of swirling around in there. There you go. So you can see the salt crystal swirling around. That's how you know you've gotten it to the point where it's insoluble, where you can't dissolve any more salt in there. So we're going to take our pendant, which we have right here. I'm just going to lay it down. Actually, let me move this over. I'm going to take and before I lay it down, I'm going to go ahead and put the positive line on uh, an exposed piece of metal on the back of the pendant here. And then I'm going to take my uh, cotton bud. I'm going to put it on the black alligator clip here. And I'm going to put my clip pretty far down to the bottom, about as far as I can get it without it touching the actual metal. So right about there. It's pretty, pretty close. Let me, let me put this my hand behind it. There you go, so you can see it really close. Now these alligator clips, they do start, um, they do, or they will both start rusting from this. Um, so over time, you'll either have to clean off your alligator clips or you'll have to uh, get yourself some new alligator clips. And I'm going to move this salt water over here so that you can get a good look at this pendant when we start to apply the salt water. So we're going to start on this end down here. And we're just going to apply our salt water. And you can start to see it see it bubble up. It's basically starting to boil. 
and I'm just going to cover all of that metal area there with the salt water and it's getting sort of a brownish black color and the reason why that is is because it is uh, cooking the cotton the cotton that's on this cotton bud it's basically just breaking that down and cooking it and we're gonna work this all over the metal and we're gonna get we're gonna dip it again we're gonna probably dip it one more time after this now don't worry I know you're gonna think oh my gosh this cotton bud is is useless now well, it's not. It's still usable. We're still using it. Also, you're going to say, is that smoke coming off of there? Well, no, it's not smoke. It's actually steam because this is so hot. This is basically boiling away the water. And then the salt is super oxidizing the metal. It's causing a chemical reaction that oxidizes the steel underneath or the exposed steel there. And where the vinyl is, we have that white vinyl. Um, we're not going to get any reaction because it's going to keep the water off of the metal. <clears throat> Excuse me, that steam is a little stinky. It's uh, salt water that's boiling. So, all right, so we're going to move to this one now. We're not going to clean this until we're done with uh, all of this engraving. When I have uh, when I have four more letters, I'll try to do like a couple letters at a time. But over here on this side, it's actually still working. It's just not as, not as, uh, the reaction isn't as great. And just be wary of the steam. It's not really going to hurt you, but it will, um, it just smells really bad. All right, now we're going to get this one back here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and swap out so you can see this cotton bud is, is <laughs> pretty dead at that point. And you could still use it. I mean, I've used, normally I just go through two when I'm doing these. And, and it doesn't really matter how much engraving I've, or how much letters I have to do. I'll do, if it's, if I've got both sides of the, uh, of the pendant that need to be done, I'll do one side with one cotton bud and the next, the other side with the other cotton bud. But it's really cool to be able to see this, uh, working in action. Those, all those bubbles coming off there, that just shows you that it's working. I also make sure I don't get any of this underneath. Don't want to get it on the metal that's under, um, on the back side of the pendant. I just want to keep it on the steel that's on the front side of the pendant here. If you, get, if you start to get the uh, salt water on the back side, um, it could cause a little bit of rust. Also, if you're doing an indented, an, in, like, um, an indented area, like on this uh, pendant, it's a it's a chest diamond, so obviously the middle is uh, is cut out. This is two pieces of um, 16 gauge steel um, smashed together with with uh, um, bronze holding them together, molten bronze. So I don't want to get uh, any of the salt water in the indented indented area either because it will flow between the two pieces. Um, where they fit together, <clears throat> and it can cause rust to come to, you know, to sort of uh, creep up over time. If you're doing this to armor, <clears throat> you want to make sure it's the last thing you do before you, um, before you put your armor, your, like, steel armor or metal armor, you want to make sure this is the last thing you do before you put it on your wire whip. If you want to do some engraving on it, you can do this and then put it on your wire whip. Um, you can do this with aluminum. If you're making aluminum armor, it'll do the same thing, and it won't leave rust behind. On steel like this, it will be it will be rusty, and we'll have to wire brush that to get all that rust out. And I'm just slowly moving back and forth here, making sure that I get all of the all of the glyphs. All right, so now we're going to do the bottom part right down here at the very bottom. And that's only like four four uh, glyphs, so I'm going to just going to do them all at the same time here. Also, you don't need to press down, like you don't need to 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 press down hard or add any um pressure to it. It's not going to help it work any faster or go any better or you know, engrave any deeper. <clears throat> what makes it engrave deeper is the amount of time in which you do this. So if I were to sit here and, you know, spend 10 minutes on each word, then I would probably start to get, I mean, then I would get a super deep engraving. 
we'll make a few more passes over this and then we'll we're gonna take the vinyl off and then we'll wash it off or rinse it off I should say and we'll have done our engraving at that point all right so I think I think we're good to go here so I'm just gonna take this out of the negative side clip it onto the plate I'm gonna pull the positive side off I'm going to unplug this because I don't want to, there we go, I don't want that plugged in while I'm doing my work. And then I'm going to pull this vinyl off. All right, so let's pull the vinyl off. I'm going to get a little bit of, a little few pieces that might want to stick on there. There we go. All right, so you can see where it's engraved on there. So. What I'm gonna do now is let's just rinse this off. All right, so I'm just gonna use a plastic cup and pour a little water over this. Give that a good little wipe there. I'm gonna get all that salt water and nastiness off of there. And there we have our cleaned pendant with our Mandoa engraving on it. Now the last or the the, the last um, cleaning step is we're gonna let that soak in acetone for 24 hours. So let me grab my jar of acetone and we'll put it in that and we'll let it soak. All right, so this is, uh, this is Mandalore's big jar of acetone. You don't wanna use a plastic glove when you're dealing with acetone. And we're just gonna set it down here gently. And we're gonna let that soak for 24 hours. And what that will do is that will keep the um, that will keep our uh, piece from rusting. That acetone will clean the surface of the piece, and uh, it will inhibit the rust. So we won't have to worry about rust from that point forward. And then what we'll do is we'll brush it. Um, we'll use the uh, wire brush on it. We'll brush it down real good, and then we'll hit it with some matte paint to seal it up and then it'll be ready to ship off. So we'll let this sit for 24 hours. We'll come back and we'll do our brush down and our matte paint. All right, so we have taken our um, steel etched pendant out of the acetone and I did a quick uh, three tier wire brush treatment on it. So you can see how nice and shiny it is. So basically what I did was in my, um, in my bench drill and you can use a, um, a handheld drill uh, if you don't have a bench drill or a drill press. What you can do is you use, um, I use three different types of brushes. I use a, an, an 80 grit uh, nylon brush and then I use a um, I use a coarse wire brush that is a uh, it's a downward facing brush so right here is the brush, the next brush that I use, is this downward brush. And then after that, I use a fine um, disc uh, wire brush or wire wheel. And that puts an, an extraordinary shine on this and really cleans it up, makes it look super nice. And now what we're going to do is we're going to seal this. Before we do that, let's look at the engravings itself. So here are the actual engravings. And as you can see, they came out really, really nice. All the detail is there. We didn't miss any, any of the little bits on the glyphs like over here. We've got some letters that have small, small parts. And so... 
What we're going to do now is we're just going to hit this with some clear mat. We're going to do both sides. What I do is I do one side, I'll let it rest for about five minutes because it doesn't take long for clear mat to dry. All right, so we've gotten our mat coating on the top side or the front side. You can see it's a little more dull. It's definitely not uh, as shiny as it was. So I'm just gonna flip it and do the back. So here is our um, completed pendant. I'm just going to flip it over. You can see how the matte finish has dulled it. It's not nearly as shiny as it was. It still has some shine to it, but not nearly as shiny as it was. So, just want to talk a little bit about the uh, finishing process for engraving. When you when you do salt water engraving, you absolutely want to make sure that you get all of the salt water off at the end. And the sealing process here really helps with that. You want to get your piece um you want to get it you want to get the work done on it quickly because what's going to happen is you've you've blown through that top layer of metal and now you're you're inside you know you're in a lower um layer of the metal and it does tend to want to oxidize um below the surface a little bit easier i know that sounds a little bit strange but this has been my experience and it could just depend on the kind of metal that you're using or the kind of steel that you're using um but you do want to work with it and you want to keep it you know keep it clean if you're doing this to armor let's say you wanted to write um you know do you're making steel armor or aluminum armor aluminum armor you're not really going to have that much of an issue with but steel armor if you're doing uh writing you know if you're doing some mandoa on steel armor you want to keep it nice and clean uh, you may have to uh, get like a handheld wire brush every now and then and go over it before you paint if you start to see rust develop um, because <clears throat> another another little issue is with the um, with the engraving done. That means if you do have to wire brush metal, sometimes the you go over it somewhat quickly in normal you know in, in a normal setting. But when you've done the engraving, you've now given a you know sort of a lower level for that rust to settle in, and the brush doesn't quite do as well of cleaning out. So just be patient with it. Um, but yeah. Always, always keep that in mind that when you do engraving like this, um, it, it can have a tendency to, to capture rust a little bit easier until you're, you know, you do your finishing work of, of hitting it with paint or whatever you do. So anyway, hope you've learned something with this short. Um, we'll be back next month with a new tutorial and stay safe and thanks for coming out and we'll see you next time in the War Masters Workshop.